Now let's talk about how do you know when a firm should shut down or not. A couple points of definitions here. The minimum point of the ATC curve is called the break-even price. And the minimum point, meaning the minimum Y value, looking for that too, of the AVC curve is called the shutdown price. In a moment we'll see why these are called what they are, but break-even price, shutdown price. Here's the issue here. Just because we're maximizing our profits, let's say we already did P equals MC, doesn't actually tell you what your profits are. Your profits could be negative, could be a huge negative number, might be positive, we have no idea. So once you've already figured out how to maximize profits, there's another actual decision that you have to make. Should you stay open or not? And as we'll see, that's a decision that you have to make for the short run and also separately for the long run. So here's the rule of thumb that we use. If the price is anywhere above or even equal to the break-even price, so that's saying that if P is greater than or equal to the minimum of the ATC, then you want to stay open in the short run and the long run. Stay open in the short run, stay open in the long run. You're good to go. Here's one way to think about it. If the price is above that, it's P is going to be above the ATC. So that means that you are making a profit. Because if you look at the profit equation, P minus ATC will be positive. You're making a positive per unit profit. So, hey, nothing wrong with that. Even if P was equal and you're making zero, that's still not bad as we talked about earlier in a previous module where zero profits, you know, is not a bad thing. But either way, that's how you know that you're good to go. But what if your price was in between these two? So again, here, graphically, you're good for the short run and the long run. But if you're somewhere in the middle here, you know, if price is in between the shutdown and break-even price, so really that's just like saying anytime P is less than your ATC, but at least equal to your AVC. Well, here's the issue. You're making a loss for sure. In fact, anytime the price is less than the break-even price, you're making a loss. But you sometimes might want to stay open in the short run, even if you're making a loss. Now, in the long run, however, if you're making a loss, you want to shut down period. So if your price is less than ATC, you know, you want to exit in the long run. But as long as your price is above, you know, the AVC, you're good to go for the short run. You're, you're okay staying open, even though it's a loss, you'll sort of close down eventually. So here, you'd stay open in the short run, but you would exit out in the long run. And finally, if price was in this range, even less than the minimum of AVC, if P was less than the AVC, that minimum point, then you want to shut down immediately. Then you're closed in the short run and closed in the long run. Now, the reason that is, is that if your price is still at least equal to the AVC, that means your revenues are covering your variable costs because if P is at least equal to AVC, if you multiply both sides by Q, that's the same thing as saying your total revenues because P times Q is total revenue, is at least equal to VC. So these two are the same thing. So if that's true, that means your revenues are at least covering all your var variable costs and on top, you maybe even have some left to put towards the fixed cost because in the short run, that's the thing about the short run. You have to pay your fixed costs regardless. Even if you were to close up shop, you have to pay them. So in that case, even if it's a loss, uh, you know, if it's not that much of a loss, then you're okay staying open because at least you're able to pay your variable costs and you, you know, have something to put towards fix, which is better than paying the full fixed cost anyways if you were to shut down. Now let's talk a little about the long run. This might seem like a very counterintuitive grand conclusion that we make, but here's the thing. All firms in a perfect competition market make a zero profit in the long run. Now, here's why that's true. It's all based on the assumptions we make. So it's not really true in the real world, but if these conditions were true, if you were in a perfectly competitive market, what does that even mean? That means, you know, there's no barriers to entry. Anyone can open up shop. There's perfect information, so no marketing needed. No brand loyalty. It's all the same products, right? So that alone, let's see what happens. Let's say, you know, your, let's say it costs you 30 cents, a bare minimum, to make this marker. 30 cents to make a marker. And let's say you're selling it for a dollar. Well, you're making a profit, right? So here's why that's not 
going to be sustained in the long run. If you're making, if anyone anywhere in any perfect competition market's making a profit, somebody else wants to enter the market. Somebody else notices that, hey, this guy's making a profit selling markers. So what they're going to do is they're going to start their own marker selling shop and they're going to charge 99 cents instead of a dollar. And then all the customers, not just many, every single customer goes to that guy who's selling it for 99 cents. Nobody's going to buy it for, a, for me for a dollar. So then I'll lower my price to 98 cents and he'll lower his to 97. Next thing you know, we're both selling markers at 50 cents. You know, we're splitting the market, but it's still a profit because it only cost me 30 cents to make it. So, but even that's not sustainable because then a third person will open up shop. Again, it's because of our assumptions because because of our assumptions, you know, there's no barriers to entry, so the third person can open up shop. No marketing needed because there's perfect information. Nobody will care whether they're buying it from us or that new guy because there's, you know, um, identical products. So with those assumptions, every single person then goes to the third guy who's going to sell it for like 49 cents. And next thing you know, there's a hundred different people selling markers all for 31 cents each. So we're all making like a very small profit. And then the 101st guy opens up shop and starts charging 30 cents for it. And now everyone goes to that person and basically everyone's making a $0 profit because, you know, you have to sell the markers for 30 cents at that point. And, you know, you're making a zero profit because that's what it costs you to make. So that's really the reasoning for why in the long run firms in perfectly competitive markets, so not our real world in this fictional world of economics that we've created, why a firm in a perfectly competitive market makes zero profit in the long run. Now, we can actually go one step further and say that if this is your ATC and this is your MC, remember how the price it kind of was given to you in the previous problems where, you know, it's a horizontal line, it sort of depends on the industry, right? You're a price taker. So here's one thing is it's important to distinguish between the individual firm and the industry as a whole. So in the industry as a whole, let's say this is the price well then, you as a firm, you have to set that same price. That price is your sort of demand. So you at that point, because it's at least, uh, this is a break-even price, right? The minimum of the ATC is a break-even price. So as long as the price is greater than that, you're going to make a profit. So you're good to go over here. You're making a profit. You're happy. But what did we say happens in the long run? When anyone ever is making a profit, other people want to join. And what that does is that in the industry, it doesn't really change you for now, but in the industry, the supply moves to the right. So your MC isn't affected, but the industry supply curve moves to the right because other people are now supplying the good. And as that happens, the price is lowered. And then you face a lower price. So now instead of this price, you're facing this new price, and so you're making less of a profit. And that keeps happening, other, but it's still a profit, so people keep entering until the price is so low that it's equal to the minimum ATC and that is where you're making zero profits because that's where you're exactly breaking even. That's where your maximum profits are to zero because uh, the P equals ATC. And then your profits are, you know, Q times P minus ATC. But remember, if P equals ATC, there are no profits. It costs you 30 cents to make it. You're selling it for 30 cents. So that's what happens in the long run. People keep entering in the industry until the price is there. So the other thing we can conclude is that in the long run, the price is always the minimum of the ATC.